It's now been a full month, 1000 km riding the Stages SB20. And it's now time for me to give you guys my full detailed review if you should or should not buy this indoor bike. Let's go. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Charles and welcome back to my cycling YouTube channel. In today's though, it is my in-depth review on this stage bike. This is an absolutely game changer for the indoor cycling living in the winter where our winters are pretty long and we have to ride our indoor bikes. As most of you guys, I've been riding direct drive trainers for the last couple years and this was totally new for me to engage in some sort of a new feeling on the bike. This bike has a lot of advantages, a lot of disadvantages as well that I'm going to go over in this video. So stick with me here, it's going to be a good one, a lot of good knowledge for me to share here and hopefully you guys will make a decision to buy or not buy this bike. So starting with the specs of this bike, so there's a lot of features I want to go over. First of all, you can set it up with Shimano or Campagnolo gearing, 2 by system, one by system, you can choose how many gears you want, up to 50 gears, which is something that they call the dream drive. What I love about the bike is the massive 50 pound flywheel, and this flywheel really gives you a realistic feel. Uh, it, you can produce up to 2200 watts, something I will probably never achieve with my weight and my power. So it's really good to know that this flywheel would not stop my capability of producing my highest wattage sprint. Something I really need to mention about this bike is it really allows any riders from any sizes to set it up for their height. My girlfriend who's five foot, she can ride it comfortably and my friend Tristan who's six foot five can ride this bike comfortably as well. So there's really a lot of range in motion from the saddle here all the way down here to safely bring it up all the way to here. So <laughs> huge range of motion. This is the same from the front cockpit. So again, this is the lowest setting and we're gonna bring it to the highest setting, which is right there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and to accommodate all the riders size there's a really nice feature again around the crank here where you can choose four different crank size so here right now it's 165 for my girlfriend and i and you have 170 172.5 and 175 mil crank length so again this is really give you a lot of flexibility to whether you want the shorter cranks longer cranks and as we saw in one of my recent video i was able to test which crank length works best for me. So this bike has a lot of stack and reach adjustments. So as we saw here, the stack, you can really go from 75 centimeter all the way down to 63. And further reach again, you can easily lose those knobs and bring it forward all the way to the front over there or all the way on the other side. There's really a million possibility here. No one is restricted here. So that's really nice to know that you will find the perfect fit for you. So the whole weight of this full indoor cycling bike is 138 pounds, which sounds like a lot, but actually it's pretty easy to move around. As you see here, we have two wheels at the front where with an easy lift, you can start to move the bike around. You can bring it in place to where you wanna have it in front of your screen, or you can move it out of the way. So at first I thought moving this bike around inside of our condo would have been difficult, but it turns out it's super easy because of the wheels in the front. So this bike doesn't run your typical chain, cassette and crank system, which then cause a lot of vibration and not a lot of comfort and smoothness. This use a carbon fiber belt drive system, which make it totally silent. To be honest, the sound that you hear right now, which is probably 40 to 50 dB, is the only sound that this bike is gonna make. It's super silent. So it's really great for your girlfriend, your neighbors or your roommates because this bike doesn't make any sounds at all. 
Even though this bike doesn't have any virtual gradient like the Wow Kicker, the bike doesn't move up and down, at least it has up to 25% grade of simulation, which is more than enough if you're riding on Zwift, Ruby, Journey Road, or anything else on the online platforms. So the SB20 also come with this tablet plus phone holder, which goes all the way to the front of the bike. You only need three screws here that you can have it right there. Personally, I don't use it because I prefer to have my big screen with Zwift on it. But if I would have bring this into a living room or into a dedicated pain cave, I would have used this with maybe a tablet, which is up to like a 14, 15 inch screen. Or you can also just put, pop it out and use your phone as well. So it's right in front of you. There's also a dedicated place for your phone to sit and live, which is great when you can have your Zwift companion app and you can call your power apps easily, or you can send a text to someone, or you can change your music. Your phone is always right there in front of you and it's super easy to access. There's also built-in USB ports, which right there you can have a cable and you can bring it straight to your phone so you're always fully charged when you're riding your indoor bike. The bike has two integrated bottle cage holder, which are super easy to access and there's no hassle. Grab the water bottle, get a sip or two and drop it back right in place. And to give you guys peace of mind, this indoor cycling bike comes with a 10 year warranty on both the frame and the belt drive. The power meter is a one year warranty, keep that in mind. So before going on to all the downside of this bike, I wanna give you guys all my subjective feeling about it, everything that I personally enjoy about this bike, stuff that I never thought I would appreciate that has been thanked and really designed by the people at stage that I absolutely love and I wanna share with you guys all of them. It's a bit difficult to explain and if you cannot feel it, but the belt system really allows a super, super smooth ride that something I've never thought it could be that smooth. When you're riding a cassette, a chain, and a crank, a regular setup, it causes a lot of vibration, and thus you can really feel it in your legs and in your lower body. But with this belt drive system, there's no vibration, it's super smooth, and I do feel I, I am able to bring an higher cadence more comfortably because of its smoothness. I've posted a reel on Instagram where I've hit 198 RPM on this bike. That's not really something I can achieve with a regular bike on an indoor trainer. Something also I've never thought I would have enjoyed about this bike is how silent it is. It's really less noise than my fan at its lowest setting. As you guys can hear, this fan produced higher dB than the bike, which was not the case with my other direct drive system. Surprisingly, I also enjoy how great a lower top tube is. Usually you don't really think about it, but when you're always on and off the bike, when you always forget something, this bike is just so easy to bring your feet forward, you get on it and you can get out of it without too much hassle. Again, surprisingly, the bottle cage placement that is right there, it's in your sight of vision. So you can really ride, look in front of you and it reminds you to grab your water bottle, take a sip, bring it back. And having two water bottles right in front of your eyes just makes it a lot easier to drink. When it's under your frame on your, and in your carbon bottle cage, sometimes it can be quite difficult to go grab. Here it's just a no brainer. And you can really just throw the bottle back. It stays in place easily. And I've never lost a bottle when riding the bike. Something I was not expecting is a saddle this high quality. It's super cushy. The shape is really great. It reminds me the shape of my Pro Stealth saddle, which is something I've used for the last couple of years. I, I love this saddle so much that I think once the summer season hits, I'm gonna put it on my tandem bike because not too sure I'm gonna ride this bike in the summer, but I really appreciate that stages did not put a basic bottom of the line saddle. It's really nice, it's cushy and it's comfortable, and it really matters uh, when you're doing hour long and two hour long rides on the indoor trainer. Something I really appreciate about this bike is also the shifting buttons. So as you see here, they're really well placed. They're exactly where my thumb would sit and I can shift up, shift down quite easily by just one press and uh, I just feel they're exactly at the right place that they should be. And what's also great about it is you have the exact same buttons, but in the drops. So here, the bigger button here, you can change the gear up, change the gear down, and they're also very easy to, easily to access when you're in the drops and when you want to sprint. So something I really appreciate as well is how the hoods are made. They remind me something I've seen before on Shimano when they were a bit on the smaller side, uh, those mechanical brake levers. Uh, this fits very good in the hands. It's ergonomic, 
and the rubber is also super grippy so there's no way yet that they're gonna slip in your hands i like it and i feel that they're really well made something else i really love about the bike is that my girlfriend gabrielle can use it whenever she wants it's super easy for her to just unscrew this big one bring the saddle height at her level and then just do the same in the front cockpit she's able to ride this bike from my sitting to her sitting in less than 15 seconds. So it's really nice for us to have a bike that we can share. In the future, I don't think I will have another bike on a direct drive trainer and she will not too. We will just share this bike into our future pain cave if, if we can buy a house someday, <laughs> hopefully soon, but we'll only have one indoor bike and it's gonna be the SB20. And now one of the most important points about this bike for myself is how stable it is for sprinting. This huge thing, it's not moving at all when I'm generating 1400 watts. And this is very good for me because I can push more into the pedals knowing that the bike is not gonna move around. I'm not gonna finish my sprint 45 degrees to the right or to the left. So just having this huge weight of the bike makes it a lot more easy for me to push higher wattage. And speaking of the sprints, this bike has this unique feature that you have brake levers and those brake lever is acting a little bit more like resistance when you're riding. So the more you bring down the levers, the more it's gonna add restriction. So for myself, when I am sprinting on this bike, I am not changing my gear up, I am bringing the lever down. So it's easier to be as smooth as possible, adding resistance, using the levers, then changing your gear. What I love also is when I'm standing up on the bike, I can also use the levers easily from the top of the hoods and add resistance as I'm doing this punchy climb. A really good advantage again from the levers is as soon as I release them, it brings back the resistance to where it was before. So if I'm going up a very steep climb, I want a burst of power, I put the levers down and as soon as I release it, I can, I can come back to my cadence that I had right before, which is a huge advantage not to shift down and wait to have again a higher cadence. Another thing I like about this indoor bike from stage is, is dedicated mobile app so it's super easy to see what gear you're riding as of right now i'm in the middle gear but if i'm going down i see i go to an easier gear and i can go back up another gear it makes a little sound notification as well so it's really nice to have some visual cue right in front of you uh, in the event that you want to see which gear you are and you want to see all your wattage and all this stuff the app is also super easy to customize and to change uh, your the crank length setting calibrate i've never really had any issue with the app it connects right away to the bike it's just great but with all this greatness that i like about this bike there's also a lot of downside that comes with it so i want to be fully transparent and honest here i'm gonna i'm gonna give you guys everything that i feel that can be improved on this bike but just keep in mind that none of these are a deal breaker just some aspect that you guys should keep in mind so the first downside i feel is the handlebar reach so the handlebar, as you can see, has a super long reach between the hoods and the start of the handlebar. And the problem with that is if you want your comfortable position from the top of the hoods, well, the handlebar is coming really close to you and might be a bit in the way of a sprint with your knee. If I want to have more clearance for sprinting and I bring the bar a bit further away, then I feel that I will be a little bit overreaching. So I know I can swap the handlebar easily, I just feel that with all of this customization around the cockpit, coming with a longer reach handlebar was maybe not a really good idea. And I do think that they should come up with a smaller one. Also on the handlebar size, this one comes with a 42 mil wide handlebar. And I do feel that 42 is a bit of a general size for all the tall and the smaller people. We see those adjustable handlebars that you just put a screw in, like those Canyon Aero Road come out last year. So it would have been nice to have an handlebar that you can change its width from maybe 38 to 44 to really accommodate every rider size. Also about this bike, it's extremely stiff. As you can see, there's absolutely no left to right movement and you're gonna feel it in your lower back. So during my first maybe two weeks of riding this bike, I was feeling some pain in the lower back. But over time, I think my body kind of got used to the stiffness of the bike and now I am able to do two hour rides easily on it. If you are someone who's maybe very sensitive with lower back pain, maybe it's going to be a little bit too rough for you. But for myself as a sprinter, I do feel that this, the drawbacks of the stiffness is totally worth it for me to pull out a huge sprint at the end of virtual races. 
So the bike has some adjustable feet, but this is a very stiff and very solid feet. I feel that it could have been nice to have some kind of like cushy feet, maybe like a spring loaded feet or like a cushion plastic thing. I don't know, but there's definitely something that you can swap those little feet for something a bit more comfortable and it would add a lot of flexibility into the bike if you change those four feet, maybe have a little of left to right movement. I know there is some rocker plates that exist, it costs a couple hundred dollars, but personally, I do not have the space for a rocker plate. So now back to the phone holder, I do feel that it can be increased. For myself, I'm a big fan of pop sockets and having this little layer here just makes the phone a little bit more slippery on this bike. Um, if I do remove my case, it's fine, it grips, but maybe not enough. Uh, so I would love to maybe see a clamping mechanism, just a little small one that could be very nice to just hold your phone, no matter if you're having a case or don't have a case. So I've came up with another solution using an elastic. I just pass it under here and I can just lock my phone in place if I really feel I want to sprint. It's not the best solution, but it works as of right now. Again, I just wish there was a built-in clamping system. So something else I wish this bike had was a built-in snack basket. So I've done my own DIY system where I can literally just use this hook and place in there. So my snacks are accessible when I'm riding. I can eat my energy bars, but this is a little bit ghetto and it's not the most solid one. So I do wish that stage will come with a three boat system like we can see here that would include a basket or maybe like another one, maybe a basket down there or down there, or I don't know, maybe on the side here, could that be a nice? I do feel that people don't eat enough when you're riding on the indoor bike. So for me, super important. And I always want my, have my snacks handy. Something I sometimes do is I have my water bottles and I have my snacks right on the side right there. So it's still accessible, but it's not the best. It can go back and then, then block the water bottle. And now a huge, huge bummer that I've learned after getting the bike is there's no way to use the built-in buttons right in the hoods to call a power up in Zwift. This is something that I was really looking forward to because when you're racing in Zwift, calling that power up at a crucial time is very important and adding it right where your thumbs are is a time saver. You don't need to go click on the Zwift companion app. But unfortunately, as of right now, at the start of 2022, there's no way to have the extra binding button inside of the hoods to call the power up. So maybe this will change the future. This is not the fault of stage. It's Zwift that is not allowing it. If you guys know a way to hack it or to make a, a workaround around it, please let me know because this will be very useful. But before wrapping this video with my final thoughts, I'm gonna give a quick call to my friend Bijan, who's the owner of B-Cycle. So B-Cycle is a spinning center. They have four or five locations around Montreal and they have been using Stages bike for a year. Uh, they have the spinning bikes, but the construction and the feel is pretty much similar. So we're gonna call Bijan so he can give us some insights on the long-term durability of these bikes and see if he's happy with them. Hey Bijan. Hey buddy. How's it going? I'm doing well, how you doing? Good, thanks for uh, taking the time for a little uh, quick call. Yeah, absolutely. Anything to help you, man. Makes me yeah, happy. Yeah, I mean, I feel that you're uh, the right person who has a lot of exp experience with Stages bike, right? How many do you, do you own? We own 369 bikes. <laughs> and for how many locations? We, hold, uh, we, we have three locations, but then like uh, we started a whole bike rental program for our online studio, Be Home. Yeah. And so... Um, like uh, each location will only have 50 bikes and the remaining of bikes is for our bike rental program. So all stages bike? Uh, yeah, they're all stages bikes. We actually, we only, <laughs> when we had a, like a, a time where we were actually started selling bikes at one point, we also sold, sold stages bikes, but we had a choice. We're like, we could sell another type of bike if we wanted to, because we could bring the price point a lot lower if we sold not stages. Like essentially st stages is just like <laughs> the best in class. So it's like, we didn't want to deal with the headaches of having too many problems and broken parts. So we decided to always stick with stages. That's great. So what can you tell us about um, the durability and the longevity of, of the bikes? Because the one that I got, the SB20, is basically the exact frame that they use. Um, so what were your experience with that? I can tell you when it comes down to the frame, um, it is absolutely awesome. Um, it's like, uh, I, we used to have, a, our studio used to have the stages, not stages, but Schwinn bikes. And like, we used to have a lot of issues with like the actual frame itself, like pieces that would break, 
uh, you have to do a lot of cleaning maintenance where like you have to take it apart, like get all the sweat out of all these different places. These bikes are different. The way that they've been designed is like sweat doesn't get stuck in the same places. And I think it just, it's more resistant. So the type of cleaning that we have to do on the bikes is like not even remotely close. And like so far we haven't had any real issues with the frame. Um, the parts that you like, you'll have issues with the parts that are really used is like the pedals. Um, yeah. But that's normal. It's like on any, any bike, if you're going to stomp on something over and over again, eventually it's going to break. Um, yeah. So. And, and also because you have to mention that your bikes in the studio, they're used like for full, full days, right? Like people oh my switch God. class. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like eight to 10 hours per day. They're being used right for every yeah. day for years. Right. So yeah. It's very cool, uh, Bijan, to, to hear your thoughts about them. And any other uh, feedback or uh, that you had, or bad or great experience with them? No, I, I think um, I think they make an absolutely excellent product. Um, I think they I think it's really really cool. I really like um, the fact that they have real power meters on the bike. Um, when you compare it to like other uh, products in the world of spinning, they usually like estimate power, and yep. that causes like huge discrepancies. Um, whereas I find uh, stages from what I've seen as the most accurate thing for power on the spin market. That's what I've seen so far, at least. That, that's very good. And I feel that, yes, stage are best in class for their parameters as well. So in, because you're spinning bikes uh, in their performance class, they have the parameters included, right? Yeah, they're, they all have the parameters, yeah. I think I've done once the performance class and it's pretty nice to see all the, uh, all the powers of everyone in the same room as you. Yeah. And, it's great to know that it's also accurate for, uh, and it's not just estimated. It makes yeah. a big difference. Absolutely. All right. Well, th that's it. Thank you so much, Bijan, for your feedback and uh, have a good day. All right. You too, buddy. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> In terms of the power meter accuracy, I did some testing from the stage power meter against my Asioma pedals. So I've done a couple rides where I've dual record with both power meters. And now we're gonna jump on the computer and analyze the data to see how close they are from each other. Both power meter has been calibrated prior to the testing and the crank length is the exact same at 170. All right guys, so here we have the data from my test with the Asioma pedals power and the stage power. And right off the bat, using DC Rainmaker analysis tool, if I just look at all the data, in terms of the average, we have usually we have around 10 watts of difference between both. Uh, the stage is usually a little bit higher on the lower end of the power and usually a bit lower on the higher end of the power. So let me explain here. So if we look at this interval right there, which was uh, over under workout, let's see, I'll look at this area. We see that the stage is eight watts less than the Asioma pedals, but, if I go more on the recovery of side of the intervals, let's I look over here, we see that the stage is higher, 50 watts higher than the Asioma pedals. So this is a little bit interesting. In terms of the sprints, again, we have a little bit of uh, similarities, but in overall, if we just look at the sprint intervals, we see that the stage has 20 watts less. If we look at another sprint here, the power curve kind of follow each other, but the Asioma pedal is a little bit higher. And it's always the case, Asioma pedal always 40 to 50 watts higher in terms of the max. For the average, we have a little bit closer of a difference. Again, 10 watts difference. This time, it's a bit higher on the stage. So in overall, I am satisfied with the accuracy of the stage power meter. I personally only use the power meter for my pedals because as I go outside and as I change bikes, I want the same power throughout all the bikes I'm riding. So for me, riding indoor, I use the power from the pedals. But if I wouldn't have those pedals, I would be more than happy with the power accuracy of the stage one, as we just saw in the analysis right there. All right, guys. So in conclusion, what are my thoughts and what is my official feedback after riding this bike for over a month, 1000 kilometer? And I got to say, it's very good. I am fully recommending this bike. This will now become my daily driver for my indoor riding. At first, when I received this bike, I thought that I was gonna ride it for just a month and then store it in the basement of my parents and then got back on my direct drive trainer. But it's not the case. I don't see myself going back to the direct drive trainer. This is perfect for a lot of reasons. 
First of all, it's super smooth, super stable. It's silent. It's adjustable for my girlfriend and I. It, I am able to do bigger sprints and stronger sprints. I am able to win more Zwift race and do better in the final sprints. I'm able to climb better and I got really used and comfortable on it. So in overall, this bike is perfect for me riding indoor. I will be riding it for the next couple of years because I just like it. It's, it's really that good. So now if you guys are interested in putting your hands on it, there will be a discount code in the description down below. It's going to give you guys 5% discount, so which is great. And as I always mention, I do receive kickback from this sale, so it funds this YouTube channel for me to become a full-time cyclist, so thank you. If you enjoyed this detailed, in-depth review, please don't forget, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already. And my name is Charles, and I will see you guys on the road or into the next video. Peace.